years ago when we first started here, you know, the, the grit and the grime from the steel mills used to be so bad. We used to sweep our tracks off in the morning, in, on the, especially on our curves, before we could oil them and stuff, because you run them out there, you could hear it just sounds like uh, cornflakes when the cars went out there. It was crunch, 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 till you, get, till you get your first couple runs done. Sometimes it would slow the trains down to a point that you, know, you didn't know if they were going to come back in or not. And I started here full time in 54. I started out as a temporary job because I think I was going to stay here, but I, I was out of work and I just needed the job. And they sort of put me on. They sort of blended, we just worked, we just sort of worked together. We just blended it together with the park and my, myself. is Kennywood. My mom and I in the summer, we never see him. My dad's favorite roller coasters are the Thunderbolt and the Jackrabbit. I think because they were from back in his day because they're pretty old and they're wooden. When I was a kid, I always liked riding coasters and stuff, and, that, and riding rides. And it's sort of, it's sort of, I guess it sort of grows into you as you get older and stuff. And generally, the wooden coasters, you know, you, you, you can visually see what's going bad in them. You know, the, the wood's going bad or they're good. And we uh, sort of look at all our structure to make sure we have no. Uh, problems, you know, during the course of our operations of the day when we do our daily maintenance on our coasters in the summer. The wood coach gives you a lot of forgiveness, you know, they, they sway, you know, they move, move with the ride. I always say it's working in an amusement park, doing maintenance in an amusement park is a field of its own. I sort of come in earlier in the morning just to, you know, I'll make coffee or start a fire, or especially in the winter, and then go over things and do do stuff like our, my paperwork. And then the guys start coming eventually, and they sit there and talk, have a little talk session, and by that time it's 8 o'clock and we're ready to go out. And then they, when you send the crews out, I give them their sheets of their designated areas, and then they sort of take care of them. Everybody thinks that when you close Labor Day or when you have your closing day, you think that we just cover the rides up and leave. You know, but, but we work here 12 months a year. I like most of the old wood coasters, but I guess if I like them, I like the Thunderbolt and the Jackrabbit. I sort of like the Thunderbolt because that was the first that was the first coaster that I was operator and responsible for maintenance on. It was called the Pippin. Then all the dips over the bank was was the old Pippin, and part of the incline is of the Pippin. Oh, Fred Weber and I go back a long time. Throughout my um, young years, I was terrified of roller coasters. You couldn't get me on a roller coaster to save your life or mine. And I started working here, and in the winters I worked on maintenance with Fred. And in the spring we would get the trains out and knock the snow off them, get ready to run them. And then we would push them from one end of the station down to the other, go faster and faster. Fred knew of my fear of roller coasters. And as I was running down this first day, I heard him say behind Henninger, the 
when we get to the end, you better jump in this train with me. And I knew at that moment that the only thing I was more terrified than roller coasters was front weather. He worked for my dad uh, initially, my dad, master mechanic. In fact, my ja dad's job uh, here at the park, taking care of rides, taking care of new construction. When my dad retired in 1980, uh, his job was given to Fred, and Fred's been in that position since. The Music Express, all we have is a picture from it. Well, that's, that's most a lot of rides over at Kennywood. We've gotten just all we've gotten is pictures of them. That was the most, seems like a million parts to it. In fact, I put that up twice in the winter, so I know what I was doing. He started in 49, and I think he worked the phony track, and I started up the restaurant with the girls, waitresses. He gave me the name of Hunky, <laughs> and that's what I've been using ever since. I've worked with Fred for a number of seasons. We were at the Enterprise one day, and I was controlling it manually underneath and the guests really don't see that. Uh, we were trying to bleed some of the hydraulic fluid out of the cylinder, because um, it was jerking a little bit, and Fred was uh, up underneath the sweeps, and he said, lower it, lower it, and I'm watching his hands, bringing it down, bringing it down, and uh, watching Fred instead of the ride, I actually dropped the Enterprise on his head. Kids in the park, they call him God, uh, his nickname. And they just say, oh, here comes God, meaning here comes Fred. He's just a great guy to work with. You know, he's always uh, thinking, always thinking. His clock is always working. We were breaking in the Jackrabbit one time, and um, he comes driving by, he just stops, and he's out in the midway, and he's listening, and he's listening, and he's listening. And he comes walking over, up onto the station, and he says, I'll be right back. And he ran out on the track, and he comes back, grabbed a couple spikes, and went back out and they pounded something back down out. Something just started working itself loose and he just spotted it just by listening. He taught me a lot about is our senses. I mean, your senses are one of the key uh, elements of being a good maintenance worker. Most of the time, if you're standing on the ground, or walk in your ride or in the yards of the ride, you can hear a click, 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 or a, or a thump or thump. You know that you got either a loose spike or a broken rail or a bolt coming loose. And you can, you can almost pinpoint it. The passion that he brings to his work here at Kennywood is really one of a kind. You know, to a lot of people, this is a job. It's, it pays the bills, et cetera, et cetera. But to him, it's a, it's a passion. It's, he's completely into his work. Fred makes you feel invincible. With Fred, you can't lose. 
regardless of the problem, he's going to solve it. And he always does. in what we did working here. And we took, uh, there's another fellow and me used to work up there in the brake pits in the afternoons. We used to try to see who can come in and bring our cars and tie up, you know, on a tie. We used to like that. Uh, I guess the record we ever had was like 21 ties in a row, but we always kept trying to keep the cars racing even and, and just instead of being, you know, six or seven seats behind. When I met my wife, I guess I was working, I was running a racer. I met my wife at Kennywood, but she didn't work here. <laughs> when you're walking the track, you sort of look for loose spikes, loose bolts, or, or, or cracks or fractures in the steel. I was really apprehensive, but after the second or third time, I sort of got, I was all right. I was never had any fear of height, so it was not, so it wasn't something that I, that I had to overcome. But you, when you walk the coast the first time, you're a little, you're a little unsteady because you don't know what you're doing, and you just sort of have to watch your step and be careful what you're doing. A lot of people say not to look down, but I do look down. Slips of air that took the wind out of me, you know. I just had to sit down to regroup. I fell backwards and got caught and I hit my hip and just took the wind out. And I like outside. I you know, always sick cold or something. I worked inside. I was outside, I was always happy. And working at Kennywood, it gives you a variety of things to, to do. You learn a lot of different aspects of mechanics and, and, and maintenance. You know, it sort of keeps you on your toes all the time. And it's a different, it's a different adventure with each ride coming in. It's sort of like a different adventure. first come here, I didn't even know what a quarter pin was. So, so I, you know, I got a good education out of it. I think Fred has the reputation in our industry of being one of the very few experts, uh, true experts, if you will. There's only a few people in our industry that really know the inside and outs of uh, ride equipment as well as Fred does. But a lot of it is his glasses, you know. He, he wears these glasses that aren't, but they have some sort of uh, micrometers in them that could uh, measure things from a distance and tell you nut sizes and, you know, certain things like that the rest of us uh, mortals aren't able to do. steel coaster is sort of rigid and we sort of have to do a lot more checking you know for flaws in the wells or flaws in the you know, steel ride is safe enough that your family's going to ride it for that day. We take pride in what we do and we don't, we have no shortcut on uh, 
and safety. Everybody's going bigger and higher and faster, but I, I don't know where, where that's going to end. Well, our, my work truck is, you know, it's, it's like, like a pale blue, but we, uh, I can repair, you know, I can repair anything or do anything out of that truck. But we can put the part together or take it apart with what I, what equipment I have in that truck. And we sort of don't have to be run helter skelter to get things. We even move rides with that truck in if we have to. We keep everything self-contained in there. Everything has a place. At the end of the day, I like to have all my tools organized in my, where I should have them in my truck. He always, he's worked here since he was like 16, 18. So he's been working here a long time, what, like 50 years? Since my dad loves his job so much, it's gonna be really tough on him and the rest of the family when he has to retire. He'll probably be pretty upset and crushed. at the time you know he's going full speed ahead you know all those years and right on the t-ball i got the same same idea you know there he goes and then as he's coming around towards the station to unload it's just barely creeping in sort of like the you know the last hurrah he's going to walk out gracefully and uh, that was it's kind of poetic i thought Joy to see the people with their families riding together, and it makes it makes it nice. You know, it gives us a good feeling. It's been a good experience for me, and I've always enjoyed that. I always enjoyed my work. <laughs>